Hello. Uh, hello, dear fellows. I'm glad to speak uh, for all of you in Bratislava. It's such a lovely city. I was here in last year on my vacation and I felt there like in my own home Kiev. Uh, so <clears throat> unfortunately I can't be there in person, but spiritually I am with all of you and uh, I'm glad to see how uh, friendly is our community and thank you for all of you. So let's uh, start to speak about uh, transforming attitude, attitude towards uh, open source and Ukrainian public administration. Uh, a couple of words uh, about who we are. Uh, we are Julius Data, a consulting group. Uh, that's Yulia Maximova and me, Alexei Boyko. We started our work in 2018. Uh, in a field on GIS, uh, and uh, we are conducting uh, QGIS trainings, and also we work in a field on environmental consulting. Uh, I, I'll be very brief in my talk because it's a, a video uh, just giving you a summary of our case. If you're interested in it, you can find uh, more detailed information about us and our work uh, through the links uh, I'll provide in the end of presentation. Uh, so um, over the past few years, uh, we've been working in the field on the GIS. Uh, and since most of our clients are local governments, we have a good understanding of the challenges facing the national spatial data infrastructure of Ukraine. Now, despite the fact that there is a policy of digitalization of public services in Ukraine and the public governance in general, we still face a number of issues, which you can see on the slide. Uh, we uh, this slide about um, situation before 2022, but a significant part of these challenges remains today. In particular, uh, this uh, uh, organization issues uh, because of uh, many of uh, state structures exist only on paper and functions poorly. Additionally, the legislation uh, is quite weak and, unc and unclear and uh, it doesn't uh, the legislations uh, doesn't set clear requirements uh, for the use on uh, gis in public governance moreover uh, although this is a no longer no longer the case there were attempts to use uh, proprietary formats uh, to push them as standards uh, for national wide uh, using of uh, spatial data. Uh, there, are, there is also a lack of clear educational policy regarding the management of spatial data at the state level. Um, additionally, um, all, uh, although it uh, has improved, there are still issues with the technical and software infrastructure for managing spatial data and some other issues you can see on the slide. Uh, from the outer perspective, it can be seen as an uh, attempt to carry out reforms uh, only by means of the state uh, of the government apparatus, uh, but without sufficient knowledge and sufficient understanding of the topics by governments. Uh, so, uh, having um, some understanding of the situation and understanding our own resources and wanting to improve the quality and usability of Ukrainian NSDI, we choose two areas to form this uh, from the, from this list. Uh, the first is uh, education, uh, education and training and the second is the technical and software infrastructure. 
As for training, we've been running courses on uh, the use of QGIS in spatial planning, maybe for three or four years uh, for now. And we also occasionally hold open webinars on the using of QGIS in various areas of uh, local governance. And as for the technical and software infrastructure, since 2018, when we started our work, uh, we have had some ideas about how to structure information in uh, spatial information on uh, lo about local communities in the form of databases for urban planning documents. And here I should mention that you even holds a patent uh, for the one of such database and we use uh, this database uh, actively when we conduct in strategic environmental assessment for the um, local government documents. So um, we got the opportunity to influence the development of uh, NSDI in February 2022, when the government passed a resolution of the describing the structure of uh, urban planning documentation database. And uh, this uh, uh, resolution became mandatory for use uh, throughout all the country. So every urban planning database in the country should be structured according to, to government requirements. Um, and next, I'll briefly outline what we have done, uh, what issues we have faced, uh, why we uh, have achieved the, our goals, uh, in my opinion, so started from what, uh, what, what we have done. Um, in 2022, uh, uh, when the structure was adopted by the government, we have uh, we had high high hopes um, for its implementations, but unfortunately, due to Russian aggression, we were forced to put it on hold, and um, there were there were intense battles around the Kyiv, and the idea of uh, doing some tools for working with spatial data seemed uh, rather naive and fantastic. But um, anyway, we decided to uh, take action to bring uh, professionals in this field together and show the public uh, that we are still planning our future in Ukraine here, and we are working on building this future. So uh, in June 2022, we uh, crowdsourced a project and uh, named name uh, this project uh, as Open Tools for Spotted Planning in Ukraine. Uh, we gathered, gathered around 100 of people uh, and about 60 of them st actually started to participate in the development of uh, our tools. And uh, by October 22, uh, we presented the first test, um, uh, test version of the database uh, along with the QGS project for work working with, the, with this database. Uh, and we uh, started to share these tools uh, publicly. And uh, we also submitted an open, open letter to the government. And this letter wa was signed by around 50 experts. Uh, and in the letter, we highlighted those issues we find in, in the, within the uh, government approved uh, database structure. Uh, uh, in 2022, uh, we released uh, the first fully functional version of the spatial planning tools for Ukraine uh, and began distributing them uh, freely. And uh, after, finally, after this presentation, we received feedback from the government regarding the letter we sent them in the fall of 2022. 
uh, and now now we uh, working um, uh, in 2020 2024 we are uh, conducting uh, some webinars uh focused on case studies on using of using spt in urban planning of div different uh, levels by the professional who professionals who make the spatial planning documents itself by the local governments who manage uh, this uh, spatial planning uh, documents using cadaster uh, cadasters and other tools and by regi regional uh, uh, governments who uh, gather all their spatial data information and uh, we uh, this year we are also working on QGIS pl pl plugins for SPT and other related tools and I'll speak about this, uh, this a bit later uh, so a few words about the challenges we face it uh, during our work. Uh, in 2022, the main challenges uh, challenge was a Russian aggression, uh, aggression, which created a very different uh, difficult environment to any long-term planning or long-term collaboration. When we started project uh, in June 2022, a few people believe it that we can achieve the goal without funding and uh, join us and uh, much more um, professional uh, were skeptical about, skeptical about the, uh, our project and uh, uh, about uh, a Q, Q, about QGIS as uh, an effective tool for spatial planning and moreover government officials perceive our project as a group of freaks now in 2022 there were, were different challenges uh, we started to communicate with government because we uh, uh, showed uh, in 22 in 2022 in 2023 we showed our work and we showed uh, that our tools are working well actually so government starts to communicate with us but uh, this communication was very uh, slow uh, and uh, unproductive uh, leading to delays in implementing necessary changes in uh, government policies and in uh, database structure. And uh, here in uh, 2024, we're still uh, waiting for these changes uh, to be adopted, and uh, we hope they will be the, adopted uh also uh, government bodies are moving slowly as usual as usual and uh, a couple of words uh, why i think we uh, succeed uh, the first uh, is just because of why because of using false philosophy we built a community uh, of people who want to work together who uh, see the problem and who understand this problem and understand how to solve this problem and additionally all the decisions uh, are made uh, uh, through discussions all the decisions in our project uh, also development process and the activities uh, of our community were completely transparent and not only our members in our project but for everyone outside the project and people could see how we work and uh, could see the development process and all the discussions so that is why many people in ukraine trusted us and uh, the of course uh, the result of our work is free to use and anyone can use it modify distribute it and this gives a huge advantage uh, to the outcome of our work 
compared to any other alternatives in Ukraine. Um, and the uh, free of use of our work is cru crucial in modern Ukraine because we have a lot of different uh, needs uh, to be funded. Uh, the second uh, uh, reason why we succeed is QGIS itself. It's proved, uh, it's proved to be a versatile and sufficient software for urban planners. Uh, planners. Uh, and uh, many... Uh, this um, old this people who had never worked with QGIS before but wanted to try it, uh, their hand in uh, to join our initiative to do to do this without any fees, and uh, people were able to uh, join us without any additional funding or investing in software, and um, no, there third reason uh, why we succeed is was a strong uh, organization management management now uh, a huge amount of effort was put into organization into manage project management by Yulia and other members of our team a uh, and uh, these efforts, so along with our consistency, allowed us to achieve success. And as a result, uh, Spatial Planning Tools has become the, the only GIS tool for Spatial Planning in Ukraine that is freely available for everyone. And uh, for now, this is only one option to everyone to work freely. So um, I'd like to say a few words about uh, our team members. Uh, this are, uh, today we have uh, approximately about 20 active members uh, in the group and uh, those people are working on developing the tools now working on promoting those tools and uh, mostly all of them actively use, use these tools in everywhere in everyday work and uh, i also want to uh, give special thanks to the members of the U european uh, QGIS community who helped us during our presentations in 2022 in and 2023 uh, we invited the, these people to our presentations and they shared their experience of using and applying uh, QGIS in public administration and uh, because our presentations uh, were uh, conducted without uh, any state involvement and the guests who spoke uh, shared their personal unbiased uh, opinions free from any formal constraints uh, which uh, normal for, for public presentations. Uh, as a result, uh, those insights uh, uh, had a tremendous impact of uh, on our audience and uh, on spreading information about uh, our work and spreading our tools so thank you very much uh, peter lars anita and gilbert uh, so uh, so so what we have done today uh, for now we have tools for spatial planning for ukraine uh, uh, you can uh, see the link uh, on, on the screen uh, so uh, uh, you can export this work uh, on your own uh, 
we also have a database and QGIS projects for cultural heritage uh, uh, sites. It's uh, this database made by Yulia at the request of the Ministry of Culture of Ukraine. So uh, you can explore this uh, also. And for now, now we are uh, members of our projects are actively working with on the create with creating of the QGIS plugin for spatial planning tools and other tools. Uh, these are Bogdan Zhuravel and Stepan Bridge. So um, they work uh, constantly, and you uh, even uh, can even see their work online on uh, YouTube streams. Uh, they uh, create in uh, these uh, plugins uh, online, uh, so you can join the streams and speak with them freely. Uh, we also have uh, uh, a community which we are trying to build. Uh, this community uh, is uh, our chat in Telegram. Uh, and we, in this chat, we exchange experience with other professionals in the field of spatial planning particularly on how to use QGIS in spatial planning. And additionally, we actively promoting uh, the members of uh, the users of QGIS in Ukraine. Uh, we have a Google map where anyone from Ukraine and from, from anywhere else uh, couldn't, uh, can leave information about themselves and this information can be become public uh, and you freely can contact with those people on the map uh, and directly speak with them uh, and members of our initiative uh, initiative also featured on this map so finally, uh, where we go uh, and what we do, uh, we as Julius Data uh, offer courses on QGIS. Uh, we have a basic course on applying QGIS and spatial planning. And in addition, we conduct webinars and seminars on the use of QGIS. And we also have a YouTube channel where you can uh, find information of both spatial planning tools and other aspects on using QGIS. Uh, so now, for now, it's all from me. And uh, be free to ask any questions in you if you want. Uh, thanks.